I'm Italian, and we Italians love pasta. And as you probably know, there's so many different types of pasta. Funnily enough, a lot of them are just different shapes. And who doesn't love different shapes? But let's face it, at the end of the day, a lot of those pastas are the same exact thing, and maybe just look slightly different. And yeah, they can carry your sauce in different ways. But when I think of pasta and the different categories within it, I like to think a little bit more about the variety. So think something like regular pasta and all those shapes we just mentioned. And then maybe ravioli, which can have so many types of things folded inside that nice pillow. And then think of something like gnocchi, which is totally different and is often made with potatoes to get that light, fluffy, and airy bite. Today, we'll use the humble potato to make gnocchi. Honestly, a lot of people I think are scared to make gnocchi. Maybe they just have no idea how to make it or no idea where it comes from. I've heard many people say they're just scared of making it way too dense and heavy, which is a really common problem with gnocchi. But I actually happen to think it's one of the easiest pastas to make. Think about how often you probably cook with potatoes if you cook at home. And now just consider the fact that with a few different steps for making mashed potatoes, you can make this amazing pasta right at home. Now, before we move forward, with making our pasta, you know we have to do our knife throw. And as always, I'm taking suggestions in the comments below to see what you want me to do. But today, I'll step things up a little bit from last time where we just went straight into the board. So here it is. This will be a left hand to right hand combo with a finishing attack. Now let's get cooking. My go-to for gnocchi is always russet potatoes. I'm sure you can use some of the other nice starchy types, but this right here is just a great way to go. You can't go wrong. For this recipe, I usually start with about four medium large russet potatoes. If you measure this out, this should come out to about two pounds of potatoes. To start, I'm gonna peel all my potatoes. I like to take two bowls, one filled with ice cold water. Peeling as quickly as you can so the potatoes don't oxidize, place your potatoes straight into the cold water. This will actually help to rinse off some of the starch, as well as keep them from oxidizing and getting that ugly brown color. Now I'll do the same with the rest of my potatoes. As always, just be careful when you're using a peeler or a knife. I cut my finger just a tiny bit here, but that's not gonna stop me from making the best gnocchi you've ever seen. Now, once you've peeled all your potatoes and have placed everything in this bowl of cold water, discard your peels, and then gently just rinse them around for a second to get all that extra starch off. Now, I'll place down a small pot and add my potatoes. To speed things up a little bit, I'll pour some boiling water right over these. Once they're fully covered, we're gonna cook these until they're fork tender and fluffy, about 25 minutes or so. Once your potatoes are nice and fork tender, remove these from the Add your potatoes to a bowl, then place a dish towel right over the top. This will steam your potatoes and get them really nice and fluffy. Most people don't do this step, but I actually think it's really important when making mashed potatoes or something similar. This right here is a potato ricer. And after steaming, this is what I use to get those potatoes even fluffier. Now, we'll open this up and add one of our potatoes into the compartment. Then close this down and right into the middle of your cutting board, let that come through. Do that same thing with the rest of your potatoes. Doing this will get the fluffiest potatoes you've ever made. Once we have our nice little pile of potato, I'll take my bowl and make just a little bit of an indent in the middle. I wanna always keep this very, very fluffy. So never mash this down. Gnocchi is all about that light, cloudy pillow. I'll sprinkle on about a cup and a half of flour, really gently across all of my dough, and then into that same bowl, I'll crack one egg, which I'll quickly whisk up and add right into the center of my potatoes. Typically, you're supposed to mix the egg with the potatoes first, then work in the flour. Then slowly start mixing everything in together. Keep it really, really light. You're not needing some big ball of dough here. Normally, I really like to get in there with both hands, but my Band-Aid is keeping me from that today. Your goal here is to get everything nicely incorporated, and you never want to over mix. The same way we do this with regular pasta, I'll now take my bench scraper, which is a really helpful tool to have if you have a wooden cutting board, and get any of that extra dough off our board. This leaves us with our nice dough ball right in the middle, which we'll just flour around on the board a little bit to make sure nothing sticks, and then we're ready to roll. First, we'll cut our dough ball into about four big chunks. Reserve three of these to the side. Take a nice close look at one of our pieces. See how many air bubbles there are in there? Those nice air pockets? This basically means that we've done a really good job keeping a nice light fluffy interior. And this is exactly what you want for gnocchi. Roll this piece out into a nice thin line. Again, Try not to really press down on it. Instead, I like to let my hands lightly roll and the piece of gnocchi sort of does the rest of the work. Once I get a long strip, I like to cut it in half again and then line these up. Now, if you don't have a gnocchi board, that's okay. Many people would stop right here and just chop down the line to make little pieces of gnocchi. Something like this should look pretty familiar to you. But a lot of people also like to take this board, place the gnocchi at the start and simply roll down it, which will give you that really nice light pattern on there. And this is what I'm gonna do for mine. We'll cut down the line to make a bunch of evenly sized pieces of gnocchi. It's totally okay if they don't all turn out perfect. Because keep in mind that by rolling them, you'll sort of get all of them into the same shape anyway. Now lightly flour your gnocchi board and begin rolling. Because we have so many pieces of gnocchi to do here, make sure you keep yourself motivated and move fast. Ow, God. 
Now it's time to rock and roll. Get really nice clean cuts through your last line of gnocchi. To cook your gnocchi, start by adding a nice handful of salt to your boiling water. Then, in order to keep the shape of all my gnocchi, since we want them all to be these pretty little pillows, I'll slide them off into the boiling water. But try to do this all at once. When the gnocchi float to the top, they're done. That's another reason I say this isn't that hard to make at home, because you cook them perfectly every time, as long as you take them out when they float. When the gnocchi are floating, remove them from the heat. Now I want to get them nice and crispy, so I'll add a few tablespoons of butter into a stainless steel pan. If you're worried about them sticking, you can also use non-stick. Once your butter's melted, scoop out your gnocchi with a really thin slotted spoon, then add them into the butter. Do this over a really nice high heat to get those golden brown bottoms, keeping a close eye on this to make sure that your butter doesn't burn. Once they're close to being done, I'll take some of my homemade truffle butter and scoop that in. Most truffle butter you'll see won't have this much truffle, but I like to really pack in that flavor. I also have this frozen piece of winter white truffle that I can shave over my pasta when I'm done, but I'll reserve that for later. Once these start to get nice and golden brown, flip them around a little bit. You can see that these have got a really nice crust on some of them, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Let these get a little bit more buttered up, and then we'll remove this from the heat. Our gnocchi is done. I'll add my gnocchi to the center of my plate. The golden brown crust that we got on this is seriously incredible. People wouldn't often think to focus this heavily on getting a black that's hot. People wouldn't often think to think this carefully about getting such a nice crust on something so small, but that is exactly what will make this gnocchi extraordinary. When I scoop, I'll try to get some of that crispy truffle as well. You've probably never had truffle crispy before, but just like crisping up a mushroom, it's quite delicious. Once we've piled up all our gnocchi and added our crispy truffle to the top, I'll go ahead with one of the biggest chunks of Parmesan cheese I think I've ever gotten, and just lightly shave it over the top of this. I want these very delicate curls going all across the plate, and I don't want to cover my gnocchi too heavily because I still want to be able to see that golden brown crust. Normally I'd use a truffle shaver for this truffle. Because this truffle's been frozen for several months now, it's not going to shave super well. But I'm still going to give it a little shot and just try to get a little bit of nice white truffle on here. And this right here is our plate. This thing will truly be indescribable. So let's give it a taste. This seriously has to be one of the most pretty dishes out there. That gnocchi just begs to be eaten. And there's something about taking that extra step for me that I love. It's not that hard for me to brown that with some butter at the end, yet it gives this amazing crust to add to the texture. So not only do we have this pillowy fluffy bite on the inside, but we also get that crispy bite on the exterior, almost like a french fry, but a lot better. But now it's time to eat. I don't even know how to describe that. All I know is I could eat this entire plate in less than a second. Literally, I could shove all of these things in my mouth at once and it'd be gone. But instead, I'll try to have each bite individually and guide you through what I'm tasting here. So let's go. Try to think of a hybrid between a really light fluffy pancake and the best mashed potatoes you've ever had. It's really then also loop some sort of egg souffle into there. And on top of that, you get a little bit of saltiness from that Parmesan cheese, and of course, truffle. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use truffle. You can really use whatever you want for this. And truthfully, if I were gonna do it, I'd use sage. Go buy some fresh sage leaves, toss that into your butter, and butter baste these a little bit. Your mind will be blown. This recipe right here is a 10 out of 10. I'm gonna be completely honest with you when I don't think something is good. But this right here, absolute home run. We're gonna put this one in the YouTube history books. Now, as always, thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe we recently crossed a million subscribers, which is absolutely crazy, and I can't believe how fast this channel is growing. But it only excites me more and makes me want to keep making even more content for you. So let me know what I should make next, and I'll see you soon.